Hey everybody, believe it or not, looks can be deceiving, and I'm going to prove it to you with today's project. Don't go away. Hello everybody, it's Paul from Fat Guy Productions coming to you as always from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. And yes, indeed, I'm going to prove to you that looks can be deceiving. I'm going to take maybe the simplest car I've ever done and I'm going to restore it and it is going to break my spine into several pieces. So let's get right to it. So in an earlier video, I told you about the package I got from Lee Payton in which I did the uh, the fire truck diorama. Well, he also sent me this Tootsie toy he found while metal detecting. And to look at this thing, uh, my first thought was, it's, it's unsavable. It is so squished that I just don't know that I can get it back to, to shape without it just crumbling into a million pieces. The axles are gone. The wheels are unusable. There's just nothing here. Um, but I decided, you know, hey, I'm up for a challenge. Let's do a video where we're going to take something this bad and I'm going to film it and I'm going to post it no matter what happens. So that's what we're going to do today. Here you can really get a good look at it. You see the, the pillars are missing. It is caved in so bad. Um, I really don't know what I'm going to do with this thing. Um, the bottom edges are all rusted away. The axles are gone. The wheels are garbage. It is filthy. I, I just don't know if it can be saved, but we're going to give it a shot anyhow. So uh, I guess the first thing we got to do is clean this sucker up. Okay, so I washed it up pretty good. It's still a, just a disaster. And now we're drying it and getting a better look at it. And, and i got to be honest, at this point, um, I, I've never really worked with a Tootsie toy before. And I don't even know that this is a, a Z-Mac. I'm thinking that this is actually a stamped toy. I, I think that it was a, a sheet of metal put over a, a, a mold and a, a punch drove down and pushed it into the mold and, and made the, the shell shape. They drilled a couple holes, threw in some axles, and put some wheels on it, and called it a day. That's kind of what I'm thinking. If you know more about these, why don't you put it in the comments down below? I, I'd love to learn more about it and, you know, what these things really are and how they were made. So go ahead and please leave comments if you have any insight onto this. Anyhow, uh, cleaning it didn't make me feel any better about the project, but I had already committed that no matter what, I was going to go far, as far forward as possible um, and share whatever happens here. Uh, the, the nubs of the, the wheels and axles that are left, I can't get them out. I'm going to have to cut them out and hopefully not do more damage to what I have here. Uh, so I've got my rotary tool and a cutoff wheel, and I'm just cutting away the uh, uh, little bit of the axle on the outside so I can pull the whole assembly out through the inside, and hopefully that'll work. And yeah, it does, but it's definitely a mess, and there's definitely nothing there that's going to be reusable. Okay, so I've got it somewhat cleaned, and I've got the wheels off. Uh, so now it's just uh, a matter of trying to figure out what to do with it next. I thought just to see if if this was going to work at all. Uh, I took a pair of needle nose to see if I could bend some of it and took a little hammer and just to kind of tapping on it to see if I can get anything to move back into the place it's supposed to be and Really, I'm having zero success. Still really scratching my head for how I'm going to deal with this thing because it's that bad. Uh, I don't know. That, that that wasn't working. It's too too stiff of a material for me to bend it by hand. Um, boy, I really don't know what to do at this point. I'm kind of stumped. I, I guess I just need to stop and 
and give it a think. So what I decided is that it's so far gone, it really doesn't matter if I kill it. So I'm going to try annealing it. And uh, when you anneal a metal, basically it, it arranges the, the molecules of the metal in such a way that the metal is softer than normal. And as you work with it, it will get harder and harder and harder again. Um, so right now I'm applying heat very carefully, uh, hoping I don't melt this thing into a puddle because, again, I don't know what metal it is. So hopefully this will soften the metal up and make, make it uh, reshape a little bit easier. Okay, so I took it over to my bench vise, and I'm just kind of squishing it a little bit to see if I can at least maybe get it to square up a little bit. Um, and it, it helped a little bit, but not a lot. Okay, to try and keep the shape that I already had, I put it back in another clamp, and I grabbed myself a block of wood, and uh, I've got a little hammer here, and I'm going to try and start... Uh, try and start pounding the the roof back flat so that maybe I can get three square sides so I just put the wood in here and beat on it with the hammer to try and get it to square up a little bit okay so I did notice that I'm starting to get a little progress I've got the kind of the the tank a little bit more in shape the cab is a little bit more in shape um, it still needs to be leaned over and, you know, a lot of work done up there. But it's starting to actually look like a tanker again a little bit. Uh, but my worst fears are becoming real. I see that the, uh, the cab and the front end have almost split completely. Um, I still have a real mess up around the, the cab roof. Uh, I'm getting a lot of serious damage uh, to this thing as I do it. But I went ahead and forged ahead and got everything as squared up as best I could. There are uh, tears in the metal. See, that piece com com completely apart. Uh, in other places, there are gouges in it and uh, parts that cracked. and So it's a real mess still, but at least it's got some shape to it, which gives me a little bit of hope. Now, here's a decision I'm going to regret. Um, I, I'm thinking it would have been better to put some metal material in here and just attach it with uh, super glue and baking soda. Uh, but instead, I just decided to uh, put a backing piece of tape there and uh, put some super glue in between and start to build it up and, and just do a big buildup of super glue and baking soda to uh, fill all the uh, cracks. Um, splits and uh, to rebuild the uh, the missing pillars so it worked a great filling all of the cracks and splits uh, it even worked really nicely on uh, putting the the cab back together where you saw that massive tear but the the pillars didn't come out so well um, they were really tough I mean it needed a lot of material and so it was really tough to to form that and shape that and get the cab looking the way that I wanted it to uh, afterwards. But overall, this couldn't have happened. Uh, this restoration wouldn't have happened, whatever I end up with, uh, if it weren't for the baking soda and the, the CA. So um, it's a technique you definitely need to make a friend with. Yeah, in addition to the cracks and the splits and all the damage up top, all along the bottom edge there was a lot of rust damage. And so again, I just ran a piece of, of tape along the body and then uh, piled up some uh, super glue and dumped a, a bunch of baking soda on top of it to uh, put some material down there that I would then have to work with so I could uh, fill in sand and, and get myself a straight edge. And now comes the filing and sanding. And more filing and sanding. And more filing and sanding. And more filing and sanding. And, and filling and sanding and sanding and filling and filing and sanding and filling and filing. And let me tell you something. It was just uh, almost depressing. Um, at one point, I, I really questioned, why are you even doing this? And, and, and worse still... The, the vehicle needed so much filling and so much sanding 
that I was really losing a lot of important details. I was lo losing the door seams. Uh, I was losing uh, some of the uh, uh, lines that demarked compartments in the side of the body. And uh, it just was, I, uh, you know, becoming in my mind a diminishing returns. Do I keep going or do I show you my pile of broken metal here at the end and call it quits? But I decided to forge ahead even after... Uh, during this filing, at one point, I break one of the pillars and had to start that whole process all over again. But uh, a lot of work going on here, let me tell you. One of the nice parts of restoring this Tootsie toy was that there is nothing on the inside. And so it didn't matter how much CA and baking soda I put in there. It really was irrelevant, so I was able to build up really nice, strong repairs from the inside because I didn't have to worry about fitting an interior or glass or anything else like that in there. So that was at least one blessing, but uh, there weren't many in this project. Okay, so with everything kind of somewhat looking like a tanker and most of the repairs at least in part in place i really wanted to kind of uh, hit this with a wire brush and and kind of see what the overall picture was so that's what i'm doing here i just chucked up a, a wire bristle brush in my rotary tool and i'm doing the entire vehicle uh, later I'm going to find out that this really isn't even cutting it as well as I'd like it to. So I'm going to take it down to uh, my bench grinder and hit it on the wire wheel down there uh, as well to really kind of get a, a lay of the land. Before I realized just how far the, the tires were gone, I did try to clean them in some super clean. And you can see what I was getting here. I quickly threw these out. Okay, so after getting everything uh, cleaned up with the wire wheel, I, I got back to sanding and filing and filing and sanding. Um, there was filing, sanding, primer, filler, uh, you name it. It was just an over and over process uh, trying to get some kind of a result that I could live with. On the plus side, I did finally make it past the uh, the filing stage and made it to primer and sanding. Um, basically, I was using a Vallejo plastic putty uh, for uh, the, the filling and then a, a Tamiya fine primer uh, to do the primer coats and sanding uh, bars uh, for from a beauty supply store like for fingernails uh, they're pretty neat they they come in a lot of different uh, grits and and uh, they're nice and long it's almost like using a long board in a body shop so uh, they worked really good you know uh, I guess much to my surprise it's actually finally starting to look like something here um, Maybe there is a little hope for at least getting a satisfactory result. So I decided to gird up my loins and keep plugging away at it. Yeah, if you used to be a fine primer, you know how far a can of it will go. I easily burnt up a can and a half on this thing. Um, but there wasn't really any choice. I mean, I needed to have the primer there to help guide me in, in where I needed to be sanding and focusing my energies. So after a lot more sanding, a lot more skim coats, and uh, a lot more primer, uh, I'm, I'm at a point where I'm thinking that, hey, this is going to come out to be something. So now I'm taking a, a little drill bit and I'm uh, drilling the holes back out where the, uh, the axle will go through. Uh, because they, they really just got filled over in the process. Uh, last thing I was worried about. I'm cautiously optimistic at this point, so I've decided I can throw some paint on. And I'm going to use Tamiya X3 Yellow. And I'm going to add a little bit of red to it, just to kind of 
give it a, a less of a yellow color or more of a orangey yellow color. Not not a lot, very little. Uh, but even that fought me. The, the, I ended up having to paint the thing twice because for some reason the first paint job just looked like crap. So uh, I had to pretty much sand it all off and, and start that from scratch. But I was pretty happy with the second paint job, especially because I'm not going to put any clear coat on it. Um, so I went ahead and set that aside to dry and then we move on. So I needed some new wheels and I decided to turn to my 3D resin printer and uh, I modeled up some wheels based off of the originals and uh, I finally printed out a set that I liked and I think they look amazing and uh, then I used the uh, uh, shafts of uh, some rivets, some pop rivets, to recreate the axles and then for the uh, axle tubes that go on the inside I just cut down some brass tube uh, to slide between the wheels and uh, it worked out fantastic. Uh, got it all together, took it down to the drill press and used Marty's method to round over the end of my brand new axles. So I, I know at this point I'm going to have something to show you, and just what that is, I'm still not sure, but I did know it needed something else. And although this uh, toy didn't come with anything on the sides of the tank, I decided to make some uh, shell uh, gas logos to put on the side of the tank. And so I printed those out using water slide transfer paper for a laser printer, cut them and uh, applied them to the side of the tank, and things were looking pretty good at this point. Alright, all I had left to do at this point was a little bit of detail painting, and then we could go ahead and take a look and see what we've done. I hope you like it, because it sure was a bear. All right, there you have it, the Tootsie Toy Tanker Truck. All right, it came out infinitely better than I could have ever hoped for. Um, does that mean I'm satisfied with it? No. Uh, there's so much more I would have liked to have done there or done differently, but not really knowing what I was getting myself into, I, I can't complain about the results. I, I'm, I'm pretty happy about the darn thing. Um, and I guess it just goes to show you that even the simplest thing, it's just a, a body and a couple wheels, even something that simple can really just be a bear to deal with. And, and this absolutely was. Uh, there were a couple times there where I, I actually th considered throwing in the towel. But I promised you guys I was going to do a video of this no matter what came out of it okay so that's that's how I rolled I decided to finish it and I'm glad that I did all right if you like this video please give it a thumbs up click subscribe be sure to click the little bell and you'll be notified anytime I release a new video if you have any questions or comments and you probably do with this horrific project uh, please leave them down below I read everything I enjoy talking with you guys all right, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. I'm exhausted. This thing has just sucked the life right out of me. Uh, this is Paul from Fat Guy Productions wishing you the most amazing, crazy, tootsie toy restoring kind of day. Until next time, be good.